Yeah, the purpose of the trial was to learn a little bit about the safety and effectiveness of apixaban uh, at the time uh, of an AFib ablation procedure. Uh, specifically, we wanted to look at two dosing strategies, uh, the so-called uninterrupted strategy, which means not holding any doses at all, uh, and an, an interrupted strategy, which in this case just meant holding one dose, the morning dose and the day of the procedure. It's a twice daily drug. So we wanted to compare the safety and effectiveness of those two regimens of apixaban and then also combine a, uh, uh, compare apixaban in general to the prior standard of uninterrupted warfarin. It was a slightly unusual design. It was a multi-center randomized trial of the two apixaban doses. So uh, in the end, we randomized uh, 300 patients to those two apixaban dosing strategies. Uh, simultaneously, uh, we had a retrospective matched cohort of warfarin patients. So the comparisons between the overall apixaban group and the warfarin group were non-randomized. Uh, but this allowed us to get the study done more quickly. Uh, we, uh, in the end, we enrolled uh, 295 what we call the valuable patients. These are patients who uh, were randomized and actually had a, a procedure performed uh, into the apixaban group, so 150 in one group, 145 in the other. Um, and then we did successfully match all 295 of those patients to the warfarin patients. Uh, we had a couple of important outcomes, mainly it's stroke or systemic embolism for uh, effectiveness. And then for safety, we looked at both uh, what we called clinically significant bleeding uh, and major bleeding uh, using uh, specific criteria. Uh, there were no strokes or, or systemic embolic events in any of the groups, so that we were very pleased and felt reassured by that. Uh, there were a couple of transient ischemic attacks uh, equally distributed among the study groups, so a total of two in the two apixaban arms and two in the warfarin group. Uh, with respect to bleeding, uh, the rate of uh, clinically significant bleeding, that was defined using the so-called BARC criteria, Bleeding Academic Research Consortium. Uh, those rates were in the neighborhood of 10%. Overall, for the apixaban groups, it was about 10.5%. Uh, and that did not appear to differ uh, in a significant way between the interrupted and uninterrupted strategies. It was about, you know, 11% versus 10%. And in the warfarin group, uh, the clinically significant bleeding, again, was in the neighborhood of 10%. Uh, major bleeding uh, in all groups was uh, around 2% or less. Uh, so for the total combined apixaban cohort, 1.7% uh, rate of major bleeding uh, versus 1.4% in the warfarin patients. We think they're similar with one important difference. So uh, ReCircuit, uh, as your viewers are probably aware, was a comparison, a randomized comparison uh, of dabigatran and warfarin. Um, uh, in that trial, they also had no strokes. Uh, so all of these strategies appear to be effective at avoiding this very uh, undesirable outcome of stroke. Um, in ReCircuit, uh, they reported a, a significant advantage for dabigatran in major bleeding where they had about a 1.5 or 2% rate of major bleeding uh, with uh, dabigatran, but a, almost a 7% rate of major bleeding with warfarin. Um, so our opinion is that that warfarin result in the recircuit trial was unexpectedly high. Uh, and if you look at you know, external literature on this subject, uh, no one else has really reported 7% major bleeding with warfarin. 2% major bleeding seems uh, more typical, and that's what we had in our study. So we're certainly pleased, uh, again, uh, that there's a very, very low risk of stroke with all of these regimens in the, in the context of this procedure. Uh, and we think uh, the results of AEIOU uh, were very similar with the apixaban group to what's been seen with uh, dabigatran and other novel drugs in this setting. So in terms of clinical practice, there, there is certainly practice variation right now on this point of whether or not to hold a dose on the day of the procedure uh, or not, to just do it fully uninterrupted. Uh, we feel like this at least adds a little bit of information that both of those strategies are reasonable, that there's nothing concerning coming out of you know, a limited sample here uh, with those two strategies. Uh, certainly there's room for more. 
uh, information. Uh, again, we, it has to be remembered that our comparisons of apixaban and warfarin in this study were not randomized. Uh, there is a fully randomized trial that's ongoing in Europe, so Dr. Paulus Kirchhoff is the principal investigator of that study, uh, and they are expecting results uh, within 12 months, I believe, uh, of a study uh, fully randomizing uh, apixaban versus warfarin.